Okay, my day job, I'm waiting on parts for broken equipment, so I've got time to catch up on my leather work. Um, today I've got a pretty simple project. I need to make a couple guitar straps. They're going to be identical, so you're only going to see one of them, basically. Um, it's a really simple project. I've got some strips of leather two and a half inches wide that I've cut off of a, about a six ounce piece of leather. They sound thick. Uh, the main pieces are going to be 40 inches long. And then I'm going to have another piece that's going to be a long skinny thing like this. That's going to be the adjustment on it. So, let's go ahead and get to this. Now I took some of the scrap and I made myself a template for how I want to cut the end. There can be a lot of different shapes for this. And in this case, the guitar has, um, I've always called them buttons. They're just basically like the button studs used in leather working. They're just wider, big plastic things that are added onto it. And you do pretty much the same you would for a button stud. Punch a hole, cut a slit next to it, and then it'll just pop down over that button. Uh, and I'll be doing that on this side as well as on the other strap. Now the other side of the guitar strap. I'm basically just going to round off the corners a bit. You can mark them to do this. Um, About every inch or so down the middle of the strap, I'm going to punch a uh, oblong hole that this um, smaller strap will go through. All right, now we try and get these straight. There we go. A series of holes that this can feed through. And basically how that's going to wind up working in the end is we can put the strap through wherever we want to adjust it. And then it goes through the strap and then through this back piece. And then just weaves back and forth through all these holes that are locked. And you wind up with a very secure way of putting a strap adjustment in. And if any time during this video you hear snoring or grunting or any sort of weird noises that sounds like a furry house guest that's crashing on my sofa. It's because there's a furry house guest crashing on my sofa. His name is Skylar, but I call him Pumba.
All right, now I need to cut another one of these pieces because, like I said, there's going to be two of these guitar straps eventually. Uh, but I made this just by taking my round end template and marking, you know, two different sides. I didn't make it perfectly round. I made it kind of oblong. Um, punching the slot in it. And then this is just a one-inch strap from there on out, which is pretty easy to mark out on a piece. But anyway, we're going to set it up on a piece of scrap here, and I'm going to get right between two little blemishes there. And this end, of course, was just marked with my round template as well. And then punch a hole and cut a slit just like I did uh, on the other piece of the strap. I'll punch some holes out here in these corners. Punch a hole. I just use flat wood chisels to cut these. You can um, get wider ones. Most of the time, this one does enough, and I just, on occasion, use it twice. All right. Now let's go ahead and bevel our edges. What makes this such a simple project is there is absolutely no stitching, no gluing stuff together. I do have some carving I need to do on it though. that I put the word freedom on it. Okay, now I'm going to say that this is going to be the back of the guitar strap. So around the wearer's back. Uh, so that means this part is where I can put freedom on it. And I'll probably start near the bottom, work my way up with the letters. Um, so we'll mark those up, and then I'll put a border around them, because I don't know exactly how much space I'm going to need for them. Um, that's going to be basically the next step. But before I carve it, I want to put some packing tape on the back of it so that it doesn't stretch out of shape. So I'm going to do that before I actually start marking it up. I've heard of a lot of different things to keep leather from stretching while you're carving it. This is what I think is the simplest and easiest one to do. I've heard of people gluing them down to tables and pieces of plywood and granite slabs and... This seems to work well. 
and takes almost no effort. Alright, let's go ahead and wipe this down and start transferring stuff on. As usual, to prevent water stains, I'm wetting the whole piece down, even the parts I'm not planning on cutting. Now I'm just planning on using this old craft aid for the letters, mostly because it's a quick way of putting letters on something, and I didn't feel like printing out anything special for this. We're going to go up 6-8 inches and try and center this up a little bit. Like I said, kind of doing this backwards. So that we can start from the bottom. Uh, if you can't spell backwards, um, you may want to write it out so you can reference it. But I think I can manage. All right, from there we can start carving. And the rest of the letters is just going to be a lot of beveling. Just tap, tap, tap everywhere. beveling done. We've got to smooth it out a little bit with this glass burnisher. And I think instead of any other tooling, I'm just going to take my wing divider and do a border around the edge. Just crease a line. Nothing especially fancy. Okay, there we go. Tooling's done on that one. Okay, I've been experimenting with some different colors lately. Uh, these are oil dyes. I've used light brown a lot, but there's a golden brown and mahogany. I wanted to see how they compared. But I also got um, this one on the end is uh, Weaver sells this oil stain, rich brown. And I mixed it with Needs Foot Oil Compound, which is a mixture of oils, not just Needs Foot Oil. About half and half. And I came up with this color, which is, I think, very similar to this golden brown and light brown. So it could be a new favorite. We'll see how it works. Uh, but I've been experimenting with it on a few things. 
and I'm just going to put it on with sheeple scrap like I normally do for a lot of things. I'm going to use gloves on this one because this promises to be somewhat messier because it's oiling the leather. It seems to stay mixed in just fine. That was one of my concerns. And as, since this is a Neatsfoot Oil compound, it's thinner than the pure Neatsfoot Oil. It could be trickier to get it even. But we'll see. Now I'm going to sit that off to the side. Let that oil soak in a little bit and dry, and then I'll wipe off the excess. Alright, since I don't think oil is a finish all by itself, I'm going to go ahead and put some resiline on top of all this. Which might even up the color a little bit. Um, but mostly it's going to just take time for the oil to work its way around through everything. But it's going to keep that color from coming off on anybody. Okay, now I just need to finish up some edges. And I'll be done with these guitar straps, basically. I just have to put it the, the strap through it, and that goes pretty quick. Now one last thing, I'm going to put this together, and the customer had it set up, um, hit the guitar strap he had before at 49 inches long, which will come out on this one if I put it right about in this hole. Uh, so that's where we're going to start. And of course, he wanted it adjustable, so it's adjustable. He can change it if he needs to. goes through that hole and then through the hole in this and then we just weave it in out of these to finish it off strap. Now I just got to finish up the other one and I'll be able to take it to the customer. <laughs> 